Hi and welcome to Chini Vision. This time we finally got round to looking at a Nintendo game. Yes, I finally got the RGB capture working from my SNES, so I thought we'd take a look at Starwing. Yes, you heard me right, Starwing. We're in the UK, it was called Starwing. Star Fox is a completely different game on the Amstrad and Spectrum. I think the Commodore 64 as well by Ariola Soft, where you go around space and shooting at things, and that's nothing like Starwing. Oh, hang on, it is. Because there was already a game in the UK released a few years before, Nintendo, yet yeah, the mighty Nintendo of all people, had to change the name of their game to Starwing. Of course, it had a special chip in the cart that did all these spectacular 3D visuals, and partly developed, I believe, by Argonaut, who gave us the wonderful Star Glider and Star Glider 2 across, well, pretty much every system you can imagine, from the Spectrum to the Amsterdam PCW to the Amiga, and all sorts of uh, systems. So you can see where we're kind of going here. I'm not going to explain the plot too much because it's a bit like Space Area, where there's there's a plot, um, but really all you want to do is go along and shoot at things. Nice menu screen here, control select screen here, we can select which selection of controls you want to use on your joypad, so you can choose whatever preference. You can select a difficulty level here, we can start off on level 1, but once you master the game you can go on to level 2 and level 3. Bit of mode 7 scaling here as we start off. Lovely introduction here as we scramble the fighters. We've got four of them here. So there's our fighter here, and then we've got three wingmen who are going to fight alongside us. Although, curiously, they go missing when we come to meet the big end of level baddies. So we take off here, and this really is lovely. If you were coming from 8-bit when this came out, this this was really stunning. Even on, you know, the Amiga couldn't do this. So it's really, really nice. Fantastic music playing in the background. I've got my comf control slightly confused there and let off one of the um, smart bomb things. I've got Slippy, the little character down there, saying, Look, look, he's one of the wingmen. I don't know what he wants me to look at, but he says, Did you, did you see me? So I'm trying to get my bearings here. Not played this for a while. You can speed up, slow down, drop a smart bomb, and generally shoot things. It, it is. As I say, the plot really isn't important, it's to shoot everything in sight and try not to hit buildings. Draw distances are fairly good given the age of the game. Things do kind of pop, as you can see there, that kind of tower, that tower block thing there just popped up half at half distance. But, you know, given the age of this game, you can't really complain too much. And you, you know, wouldn't have seen things like this on any home system when it came out. Ooh, been hit there. Um, I'm, I am very out of practice on this. Occasionally the wingmen will say they're being attacked and unless you intervene and help, they will take damage. There's occasional power-ups through the level. There's is that one down there? It's, no, it's sometimes difficult to tell what's a power-up and what's a bounty because of the draw distance is there. Don't know what some of these things are supposed to be. There, that's a power-up there, if I fucking get it. Sometimes it's difficult to tell what some of these rope baddies are supposed to be. And some of these things have been... Ah, oh, here we go. Croak, help me, says Slippy, so I've got to try and shoot. Yeah, there you go. Ribbit, thanks for the save. And there's another power-up. Taking a hit. Fast forward is a bit here, so we're at the end of level baddie on level one.
As I shoot him and aim at the red areas, bits will start to fall off his spacecraft. See if that does any damage. His energy level go down, goes down a little bit. I, one thing I don't understand in this game is why? Do the, where are the wingmen where this, when this is going on? You know, they fight with you through the level, then when the big guy comes at the end of the level, they all clear off. So that, that's a little bit of a disappointment. The big old chunk has fallen off the enemy there. Yes, the graphics are slightly crude, but you've got to consider the age of the game, the speed, the sheer speed, everything moves round at. The special FX chip really doing things that the snares off the shelf couldn't do, and certainly the other systems. I think perhaps the only thing I can think of machine that I can think of in this era that could compete with this would either be a very high-end PC for which there weren't games like this available or perhaps the Acorn Archimedes, certainly the faster Acorn Archimedes, although to be honest, on that system nobody was really taking advantage of the hardware. Most of the games had a feel of they were knocked up in someone's bedroom. So although the system had the power, there wasn't really anything of this quality on it. So I defeated the baddie then, stage one's now clear. Oh look, my wingmen are back. Well, you know, thanks for that, thanks for that, guys. Thanks for all that help. So the asteroid belt. I'm a latecomer to Starwing. I only got this game 18 months ago and I got my first SNES. So it's the first time, I'd, although I'd seen the gameplay before, I never actually had a real proper go at it. And it remains impressive even today. Now we're in space and we're inside our spacecraft and using the targeting here to, to shoot enemies. And I'm just press one of the buttons and joypad and just zoom to the outside of the spacecraft just to give a different view. Really this level I think is best played within the spacecraft so you can see the targeting. And again you've got some little enemies here that remind you of space harriers, like there's a space caterpillar thing there that zoom past. Mode 7 being used, curious hybrid here in fact of 2D and 3D because the asteroids are Mode 7 2D sprites whereas all the spacecraft are 3D. Slippy's taken a hit there, so his shield's down. Different music track for all the levels, and now we're really into the asteroids, just trying to avoid them and not be hit. We've clearly taken the decision to keep the asteroids 2D because if they try to do them in 3D, they'd probably end up looking like those terrible asteroids you see in the uh, 1987 to 1989 Doctor Who sequence where you got all that wonderful CGI and then those dodgy asteroids go past because the computers of the day didn't have enough grunt to be able to render something that looked even remotely realistic. Don't quite know why the asteroids are spinning around in a line like that as I go past. I fast forward a bit here onto level three and we're going to fly down here and we're actually going to enter this spacecraft again on my own don't know where the wingmen are they've all cleared off and this is really lovely you get to fly through the spacecraft and just try to and unsuccessfully avoid the doors opening and closing there and again it's the sheer speed of this it's like an, an arcade experience in your home the Mega Drive had nothing like this I know there was virtual racing and games like that which were nowhere near the speed or impressive nature of this virtual racing feels very rough around the edges 
when you play it and looks a little bit grotty by modern standards but this still looks really good it's simplistic clean and fast and there's, there's a definite hint of star wars just flying through the duct here and again i'm just as i fly through this bit here and i'm going to be confronted by the end of level baddie and i really don't know what i'm supposed to be doing in this bit if i'm supposed to be shooting in the middle or the bits firing lightning out from the edge so i'm not going to last very long you know i'm not a particular fan of the snes i'm really a mega drive person at heart and in most cases prefer the games in that system but star wing is definitely an exception to that it's a really really polished game it's quite unlike anything you see on other systems certainly at the time it was it was absolutely jaw-dropping completely unique reminiscent of games like star glider as i mentioned because of the argonaut connection but so many levels beyond that star glider is a great game but it's stone age compared to what we're seeing here the combination of the snes's inbuilt hardware the special fx chip and some great programming have combined to make a game that is truly special even today.